Okay, so this is a quick overview of Sketchbook Pro. I've customized the screen a little bit to fit what I need. I got rid of the other wheel, but I'm keeping this one because I mostly use it for drawing and sketching. So this thing here, you can put it just anywhere you want as long as you grip the side of it and you can bring it to wherever you want. What it's for is to increase and decrease the opacity of your tool or make it bigger or make it smaller. By sliding sideways, you, you uh, modify the size and by sliding up and down, you modify the opacity. There are certain tools where you can play with the tilt of the brush, like the uh, felt tip pen and such. where you play with the size by going sideways and oh no that's still the opacity okay well I was wrong in any case I tend to use the pencil for sketching and I select the inking pen to do my inking okay and usually leave my inking pen bigger than the line I, the pressure I usually use. So in this case, at this point, my my field is the uh, at 100 dpi. It's just like the default that Sketchbook Pro, Pro produces. So my pen is at about a size of five, according to what it says at the bottom here, five. So if I press hard, then that's the size I'm going to get but my regular pressure is giving me this size. All right. Pressing hard, pressing lightly. So at the bottom here is a lagoon. The lagoon is basically where you get most of your tools. So there's a toolbox here that is there by default. You can turn it on or off as needed. You want it on again, you just click on the tool down here. This will toggle the color editor, which you can also turn on and off with the menu option up here. In the lagoon, you have to click and then drag in any direction to use any of the tools there. This is all customizable in the Edit Preferences menu. So the first one is to have your image in real size or in taking the full screen. That toggles the um, either the zoom button, the rotate button, or the move around. So if this is also going to show up if you hold the, sh the uh, space bar. So by clicking on zoom, drag back and forth. You click in the middle, you drag back and forth. The rotation, you click on the rotation section and then you can turn it all around. It kind of snaps at its original position. And this allows you to move it all over the desktop. So if you want to work on a certain part, that's what you do. So if I want to zoom in and work on a section, like you saw what I did, there's that wheel here. There's a little X at the corner. Click on the X, it goes away. Or if you're using the space bar, release the space bar, it goes away. So I'm really zoomed in here. My tool is not at full opacity. There, now it's at full opacity. Okay, so fully zoomed in, the computer is going to extrapolate my lines a lot better than if I'm zoomed out. And I do this, if I go and zoom in again, chances are, depending on how good the computer is, that my line is going to be a little bit jagged, but my computer is actually pretty good for that kind of stuff, so I'm not getting that effect. All right, next. Okay, so that makes the ruler appear. 
Let's zoom out. Okay. There's a ruler here that appears. You can adjust the position of the different ends, and then you can trace on that ruler. Move it from the center point. The thing that's great about this is that you can trace your lines with pressure. You can start light, press harder, press lighter, do dotted lines, and it acts as a real ruler. Another tool is the ellipse. The ellipse yeah, let me just clear the screen. The ellipse tool right now is uh, keeping in memory the last time I used it. So it's an ellipse. Double click on that square corner and it becomes a real circle. That square corner here is to make the thing bigger or smaller. The one with the two arrows is to make it wider or narrower. The one here is to rotate your, um, your circle, and this one gets rid of the, uh, of the ruler. If you want to move the ruler around, take it by the middle, uh, the middle place. It should, uh, and you always have the information at the bottom for the angle and all that. Rotation's at zero, and it's the same thing. If I want to draw on that ellipse, it will react to pressure. What else? There are tools that are called uh, symmetry tools. Let me delete that. The symmetry tool allows you to put uh, a mirror line anywhere on your drawing, whatever you draw on one side appears on the other side in mirror. So this can be useful if you're going to be doing character design where you want your character to look the same on both sides. Speeds up your drawing time make adjustments on both sides. It's really handy that way. The sub menu allows you to turn on and turn off the other symmetry tools. This one means that according to how many uh, axes you put in, you can mirror a whole bunch of stuff. Look, it's a spirograph. So either they cut or they do. Anyway, explore this stuff. It's a lot of fun. Let's turn this off. There are perspective tools. With the perspective tool, you can move your uh, vanishing points off the paper or on the paper. You can move your horizon line around. Holding the shift key before moving a button will snap to horizontal. Whoop. Where does it? Not in this thing. It just snaps to horizontal. So with your horizon line, your vanishing points, whatever you draw will follow the vanishing points. So no matter how badly you draw your lines, and if you're following or not, it will draw following those vanishing points. So it's really, really useful to draw anything in perspective. In this tool, you have one point perspective, two point perspective, three point perspective, and all these points are movable, and fisheye. When you do fisheye, it will, uh, you pull on any side and it will pull all the points the same way. Okay, next, turn this off. This is the 
uh, line stabilizer. So the more the higher this number, the more it will try to correct your line. So it makes a drag. The lower the number, the more faithful it will be to your uh, pencil marks. But it can also uh, make an, a line that's not really nice because it's uh, recording every single one of your movements instead of just extrapolating. Mine is set at about 40 because that gives me... Oh, Okay, yeah, I turn off mine, but if I turn it on, I've got it set at about 40. That's if I really want to do a nice line that's got a nice curve to it, very clean, but I usually turn it off. The one next to it is if you're going to draw circles, it will fix your circles. Draw an ellipse, and it'll fix it automatically, as long as... You kind of draw it right. Draw your circle closed. It doesn't correct all of them, but it does correct several of them. And of course, drawing lines or drawing squares, drawing circles, or doing connecting lines. is a lot less organic though. These menu buttons here, let's turn this off, turn on your layer panel, your tools, your colors, or your Copic marker library. Turn these on just when you're doing color, otherwise what apps? Back in the lagoon, pencil, airbrush, I've changed it for the inking pen. It's usually on the paintbrush, eraser, uh, switch to previous tool. So all of these are there. You can use them. There's basic colors put on the color wheel, wheel. You just drag, click in the middle, drag it to the color you want. So I'm drawing in black, click in the middle, draw it there, drawing in gray, click in the middle, draw it there green so these colors are also customizable the one at the bottom transparent is an eraser using the exact same properties as the tool you're using I like to go between the black and the transparent when I'm doing inking because that way I get a really nice sharp um, erasing when I'm doing uh, when I'm fixing things one at the bottom here is for your selection tools, which are also up here. I keep taking it at the middle and dragging it to the right. That erases everything on my uh, sheet of paper. The bottom one is for going to next image, going to previous image, saving, making a new one, or opening from the folder. So just go to the next one, go to the previous one. You can also do page up, page down, and that allows you to go through all the images in the folder. So if I open, nope, I don't want to save this. I'm gonna go into that field high, character designs. No, I'm gonna go in the scenes. And let's take Wing Joe. See how everybody is there. Image size 150. So let's bring it to 300 dpi. And I've been going for 10 inches for the drawings. Let's open up the layers. Oh, yeah. In your layer panel, creating a new layer is just click in the middle and drag up, erasing a layer is click in the middle and drag it to the uh, northeast. The west is um, naming the layer. And then you can merge all layers or just merge with the one at the bottom. So merge all layers is uh, southeast. 
south is merge only the to the one layer below. Uh, southwest is lock the layer. Uh, west is make the layer invisible, and northwest is duplicate the layer. What I really love about this program is that there's very little use of buttons. It's really good to be able to just um, to just draw directly and just manipulate everything with the with the drawings. So what I'll tend to do is zoom in to the character, make sure I'm on the right layer, that I've got the right tool and the right color. I'm using pressure to make my lens thick and thin. First, making the lines the bottom a little bit thicker as the light's coming from here. playing with the pressure and I get to have when I'm drawing I stop talking okay I don't like the snow so that's one of the examples of going down getting the transparent line here so that I can fix I can fix and get back to my black. Zoom out a little bit. So I've programmed the buttons on the side of my Cintiq so that I have things like uh, Shift, Control, Alt, and Spacebar down at the bottom here. I keep using these. These are very convenient buttons to have. Yeah. Sometimes I will just come and adjust the line like such. Black. Let's just adjust this a little bit. So there. Go back to black. Just to just adjust the quality of line sometimes. There we go. Bit of black. Hmm. More black there. 
just for thickness for drop shadow. This bottom line here. So there you go. This is how I do my inking on these things. I hope this helps. I hope this introduction to the program is, uh, has at least shown you a few things you didn't really know beforehand. I, if you already knew all of this, then sorry for redundancy, but there you go. <laughs>